HV Studio. This is the Unnerved Banter. Welcome back to the Unnerved Banter. It's the show where we discuss topics that are strange, terrifying, and sometimes just plain silly. I'm your host, Chris Fricky. And if you're more used to our story episodes, this is a little bit different. It's more of a conversational platform. Now, today's banter episode is a bit of a treat because we actually recorded this in person. Uh, typically, Jeremiah and I do this over the phone, and Shelby and I happen to be traveling through Illinois, where Jeremiah lives, and we were able to stop and see him for a bit. So we had to record something in person uh, with the time that we had, and we didn't have the usual amount of time to research certain unnerving topics to discuss, so we decided to play a game called What Would You Do? Worst Case Scenario edition. I don't know. It was something we kind of just made up on the spot, but I think you guys will enjoy it. It was a lot of fun to record, and uh, yeah, we just had a lot of fun hanging out in person. So without further ado, here is the episode. Hope you enjoy it. All right, guys, we are actually in person. This never happens when we do the banter. We always do it over the phone, and Shelby and I are in the area, traveling through the area here in Illinois, and we're visiting Mr. Jeremiah. So, Jeremiah, thanks for having us. Of course. Welcome to my bus. <laughs> yeah, we were in your bus. Tell us about your bus. Um, well, up until very recently, I had a cool cowbell hanging near Chris, but then his voice was so loud that it made it ring every time, and then he insulted it. And he also insulted my dreams of living in the mountains one day with a cow and with the bell around the neck of the cow. And so now I'm just trying to figure out what to do with my life. But other than that, my bus is pretty (laughs) nifty and thrifty, I guess. Uh, It's pretty cool. I've got a lot of shoes, way too many. And um, because you work at a shoe store, I work. Well, it's a specialty run store, but no, it's really cool. I have a ping pong table as an actual table that I eat on and I don't own a fork at the moment. Yeah, he only has chopsticks. We were here the other night eating supper, and we're like, Jared, can I have a fork? Nope. I only have chopsticks. Nope. Don't need it. (laughs) Uh, Chopsticks and a knife. And I don't own a spoon either. Yeah. But you're making it work. Yep. You're you're living the dream. I'm making it work. I've got one mug and two plates and a cup, and that's all I need. Yep. That's right. And it's pretty cool. So, yeah, it's fun to live by my my good friends Chris and Shelby again. As neighbors. Yeah, been here for a week. It's been fun. And so, since we're here visiting, like I said, we decided to take advantage of the time we have together and, yeah, record an episode, or at least a portion of an episode, because typically we have subjects that we talk about, certain (laughs) unnerving... Subjects. Certain... Yes, my subjects. (laughs) Typically we have them, but now... Yeah. Sorry, (laughs) Chris. My kingdom has fallen, my oh, subjects gosh. have scattered. But typically we have some unnerving topics, but we don't have that prepared. So we're going to actually do a quick little worst case scenario type game, I guess you could call it. I'm going to give Jeremiah some worst case scenarios, some unnerving scenarios, if you will, and just to see what he would do if he was in that scenario. And you all can imagine yourself in this situation and what you would do. So, Jeremiah, are you ready, sir? Yes. Okay. Wait. Are you going to answer these two? I might chime in. I don't I know. I didn't know this was uh, just me sort of well, on I might, the spot. Well, I, I might chime in. What do in. I win? You a win fork? a fork. <laughs> Please get, I kid you not. Can I have a fork? If you do good enough, I will give you a fork. Is it metal? Yeah. Oh. <laughs> a shiny fork. Oh. A dingo hopper. Is it one of those hilariously large salad forks? <laughs> yes. <laughs> I knew it. It's no, too good to be if true. You, it, tell you what. If I think you do... Uh, well enough on these questions. I will give you a fork. I think Shelby will be okay with that. We have enough forks in our van. I think, yeah, we can donate a fork to our friend. (laughs) Perfect. All right, let's go. All right, worst case scenario. Jeremiah, you are out enjoying a lovely day in the desert on a hiking trail. 
enjoying the scenery, and then all of a sudden, something bites you mm. in the leg. It's oh no! You spin and twirl and say whatever you say when you get bit. What would you say? Oh, oh, oh shoot! Oh, oh shucks! Oh, jeez! Oh, gee, dang it! Not again! <laughs> So you fall down, you look at the damage, and huh. there are two, it's, it's clearly a snake bite is what I'm getting to, okay? Uh. A snake bit you, but you did not see the snake slither away, <gasps> all right? So you don't know if it was a rattler, you really don't know, okay? Well, here's the thing, Chris, I know a lot about the desert and snake bites. Oh, fantastic. So are, is it two singular punctures, or is there a small row of punctures leading up to the two larger punctures? because that would tell me a lot about what kind of snake it was and how much danger I was in. Wow, you're such a snake nerd. I had no idea. I just am a desert nerd. You might just ace this test. So I don't have an answer for that, but I just imagine two bite marks. Acceptable. What does that mean? (sighs) What kind of snakes are we talking about? Uh, Probably bad ones. Okay, probably bad ones. Yep. Venomous. Is that more common Uh, with those kind? Okay, perfect. So yeah, you, you didn't see the snake. What do you do? You are the only one out there. Okay, the furthest, your car is uh, about eight miles away. You really hiked in deep, and there's no one in sight. What do you do? Okay. Do I have water? You have about a cup of water. There's a stream another mile ahead that you're hoping to refill at, some fresh water. So I have filtration? It's known to be fairly clean water. People drink from it all the time. Uh, But sure, you have a... What's that straw called? Life, life straw? Life straw. You have a life straw with you. Okay. Hmm. What do you do? What sir? do I do? Yeah. You probably don't want to keep mean, walking because that's not good for it, right? Because the venom, if it's venomous, yeah. that's the thing. You don't know. It could spread. So the first thing you do is you take your two. <laughs> you cut you take, the leg. You chop the leg. <laughs> you take your two chopsticks <laughs> and you insert one into each hole. <laughs> Plug the Rotating holes. clockwise. <laughs> um, so I'm going to do multiple things. I'm going to call, you know, if I can, cell service. You don't have cell service. Did you say that? No. We, we haven't Why talked about it. Why are you hurting me with, no, I, with this it's way? It's the worst case Why scenario. Why are you hurting me this way? <laughs> this, uh, this, oh, it man. was the snake. Yeah, no you do cell not service. have cell service. Well, then I'm very briefly looking for the snake because if I can find the snake, I can tell you what kind of snake it is. There's a snake hole near you, a Snake, but hole. there's no snake okay. to be seen. So then I'm probably marking the location somehow with a stick and some kind of piece of something so I can tell whoever it is where the snake hole was and they can come back oh, in it- theory and look because anti-venom is specific to certain snake types. So what you would get, I'm probably going into this too. So <laughs> basically it helps a lot in saving your life if they know what kind of snake bit you and which region it's from obviously is helpful. So I am most likely then gonna be monitoring how I feel very closely. I'm going to try to get to high ground if I can and look for any kind of signal on the radio or cell service. Um, Some phones, I believe, have some kind of SOS track option that's that's satellite-based. So either way, you do have that SOS feature on your phone. Um, So I would probably activate that because that'll continue to run in the background as you go. Um, And then... I'm probably gonna, jeez. Suck the venom out. No, that doesn't work. <laughs> okay. <laughs> <laughs> Unfortunately. Okay. That's tricky. I mean, I, it, I it's mean, gonna set in quick. If, if, it's, if it's gonna kill you, it's gonna set in pretty quick. So okay. you're gonna become either immobile or go down very fast. So I'm gonna probably, depending on whether or not I've told someone where I was going mm-hmm. to hike, I may head for the stream. And a mile away towards the way you were hiking originally. Potentially, mm-hmm. yeah. I mean, it depends on the terrain and stuff, if there's shade nearby. So I may either head for the stream or head for the shade. I might tourniquet my leg off, just like it cuts, cuts off the blood flow. Mm-hmm. Uh, but like I said, pretty quickly you're going to know if you're in mortal danger. You'll know if it you're was venomous or not. you're going to go down. Yeah. yeah, you're not going to... You're not going to last long. So one of the better things you can do, from what I understand and my experience with that kind of thing, is to limit your movement, get into the shade, and hope that somebody just comes by. I like your way of thinking through it, because I would never would have thought of marking the spot for 
people to know what kind of snake it is to go back to and figure yeah. out that's a good way to potentially help you further down the phone thing i never thought of that either so yeah i'm impressed so far so good and by the way i want to preface this by saying we're experts so we know what we're talking about that's not true this is just our opinion we're not professionals this doesn't mean this is what you do this is just our opinion yeah chris they can take that sound bite and blackmail you i mean you gotta be careful nowadays i'm telling you i'm telling you i say pass okay very good jeremiah it sounds good to me anyways okay, okay so next scenario here we go you are in the grocery store all right just getting mm. your 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 few groceries for Been the week there. as you do all of a sudden you hear someone scream and a man yells get down on the ground to everyone okay mm -hmm. he's not just stealing from the cash registers and taking off this is a hostage situation okay okay he needs a hostage so that he can then get we'll just say a hundred thousand dollars okay in communication with the police all right in a getaway vehicle so now he needs a hostage he's looking around everyone's on the ground he sees I've peed my pants. <laughs> yep. He sees you've peed your pants and that you're the perfect. I'm standing curiously in a puddle of mango juice. <laughs> <laughs> in the juice aisle because, you know, there were shots and. A bullet must have hit the, <laughs> the, mango the juice. pineapple <laughs> juice jar. <laughs> he looks over and I'm in a puddle of yellow liquid. But then he sees that there is actually a can of pineapple juice in my hand with a bullet hole through it. <laughs> like, oh. So he sees you. And thinks, perfect hostage, I can take him. He grabs you, picks you up, holds oh, a gun to your head. So strong. <laughs> you are now the hostage, and he is giving his demands over the phone. Yeah. People are filming this. So within minutes, there's police, SWAT, you name it. But you are the hostage. Hmm. What do you do? That's Mr. Hostage to you. <laughs> He's got a gun to your head and everything. Okay. okay? Yeah. All right. What do you do? I'm just going to hang out. <laughs> What's he going to do? I mean, he wants money. Just give him the money and they'll let me go. But that's that's a like that's a true. Technically, that's what you really should okay, do. Okay, Chris. But I want like He's a John, dragging me along. I want a John Wick answer. He's what dragging if, me along. If, if you were the super action figure that you want to really okay, be, I'll tell you what I'll do. What are you going to do? This is what I do. He's dragging me along. I'm like, oh, don't hurt me, sir. And he's dragging me closer and closer to the puddle of juice. What's that? A can of beans. I tell him I was going to get these anyways. I grabbed the beans. I'm waiting. I'm waiting. And his foot inches closer and closer and closer to the pineapple juice. Then slips into the pineapple juice. I seize my moment. He's off balance. Finger slips off the trigger. Beans come up. <laughs> hits the temple. Sweep the knee. Hit the head. Take the gun. Get the rest of the beans that I needed and leave perfect the cops do the rest the SWAT team comes in yep another thing I would well maybe I would just try to like become his friend Oh, uh -huh. you know that's nice just say like hey bud what are you struggling with try to talk him down yeah 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 hey guy <laughs> can't be that bad can it SWAT takes him out no. <laughs> <laughs> oh, oh. get him boys he's my friend <laughs> okay I'll I'll give you a pass. All right. Yeah, that was good. That was good. Thank you. Yeah, I liked the can of beans thing and and how you worked that. I mean, I did buy three cans of beans today, so yeah. that was not a goof. And turns out, because of your heroism, they let you take the beans for free. <gasps> I thought you were gonna say the money. <laughs> but no, the ransom. Sorry, money. you just can get I have some of the money? Well, you I did take him out. No, free can of beans. Okay, I get the gun. I grab a hostage. <laughs> <laughs> you join him. I'm in charge now. <laughs> no, he's down. Oh, he's he, the hostage. He's down, soaking in a in a puddle of bean juice and coconut. No, you do a and pineapple. You do a switcheroo. Okay, hit me with another. All I right. need a fork. All right, here we go. <laughs> I need a fork. <laughs> I hope I'm doing okay. I need a fork and I need it now. <laughs> I've got dinner to eat. All right, your next scenario. You are in the middle of the forest. Mm -hmm. All by yourself. Hiking. You're on one of the trails. Everything seems to be honky-dory. It's kind of later in the year. Typically, the snow doesn't start falling yet, but you just happen to uh, not look at the weather report. And all of a sudden, a blizzard hits out of nowhere. Gosh. Yeah, you did not see this coming. You are not prepared. 
you do not have the right equipment, the right food resources, your only option is to get to shelter as quick as possible. You're too far in. You have to find shelter. Am I, though? Yeah, you How are. How far? You're eight miles in, okay? Okay. Yeah, you don't have time to get back to your car. Well. All right? You make your way through a bunch of brush, and you come to a cabin. Oh. Doors are locked, okay? Uh-oh. So you think, well, I'll have to break in. And you find a window. You're about to break it open because this blizzard's really coming in. So you have rock in hand. You're about to break the window. And then all of a sudden, you hear, Wee! 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 The cry of a baby. Oh, my. What is that? You follow the noise. Behind the cabin, there is a car. And in the back seat of the car, in a baby car seat, there is a child. Elsa. (laughs) From Frozen. She's crying and it's making it snow. Okay. Yeah, there's a child All right. in the back of this car mm-hmm. and no adult to be seen anywhere. Wow. What do you do? Well, this is, this. okay. Man, at first I was just going to say I can trail run that eight miles in no time flat. The even snow is coming way too, is a complete wide out. Like you have to find shelter. If you try to trail run that eight miles, you're not going to make it. The trail's disappearing. Eh. I mean, no. Oh, I mean, you can go that route. It's just well, I don't answer. need to now. I've got all the, everything I need. I've got a right. You have a shelter I've that got you're a shelter. Yeah, a you're about to break into, but you have a child now to take. I, do, I have a child now. Yeah, so, I can't go running off. I've got a child to look at. Yeah, if you choose to, got to provide. Or you could just leave the baby in the car. Well, no. Okay, what are you gonna do? Okay, is there gas in the car? Is it running? Is there a key? There is no key. Doors are unlocked. Doors are open. Doors are unlocked. Okay. Footprints on the ground. There's already snow. There are no footprints on the ground. You don't know how long that baby's been in there. I'm going to feel the vents. Are they warm? No. Mm, Cold. I'm going to feel the engine. Is it warm? No. Cold. Mm. (laughs) All right. I'm going to look around. Is there... How small is this baby? I don't know. (laughs) Baby size. (laughs) Okay. (laughs) Is there a baby bag? Like a diapy diap bag? Uh, No, there is not. Uh, No food? No food. What's in the trunk? A tire. Can babies eat tires? (laughs) Baby hungry? <laughs> Baby want tire? <laughs> Baby need air? <laughs> um, <laughs> uh, getting the baby, bringing it in, yelling a lot. Yell, yell, yell. Hello, anyone there? Is this your baby? I found your baby. Such things. Then I'm going to get a fire going or something in there. Get it nice and toasty. Mm-hmm. Look for some food. Do I find food? There is no food. Is there gas in the car, did you say? Um, there is a little bit of gas in the car, yes. Okay. Okay. What are you going to do? Eat, drink the gas? Is that your no. food resource? So there is gas in the car. This baby is yeah. clearly malnutritioned also. Malnourished. Like this thing needs food. Do I have a phone? You do, but again, no, no service. service. <laughs> I'm going to see if I can get service. I'm going to go climb around, see if I can get on top of the house. You can't. Or something. It's, okay. it's, it's windy. It's blowing full wide out. I mean, imagine like the worst kind of blizzard. Okay. At this point, the amount of time that's gone by... Like, snow is stacking pretty good. Mm, baby already looks now malnourished. Yeah. Also, the baby, his diaper, it's full of poo-poo. Oh, it's full of poo-poo. Yeah, you, what are you going to do? I mean, I'll just take some, something in the cabin, cut it up, make makeshift diaper for baby. Easy. This cabin is completely cleared out. There's nothing? There's a fireplace, but no furniture, nothing. There's no water. There's a sink there, but there's oh. no water. There's a fridge, but it's completely I mean, empty. No problem. power. Um, I've got a knife because I always have a knife. So I slice the seats out of the car. Oh, there you go. Fabric. And you make a, a make diaper? A diaper? You make a diaper? Seat, seat, seat fabric? Okay. Yeah, easy. Nice. Wipeys as well. <laughs> wipey. <laughs> wipey then diapy. Okay. Um, so you change. I'm getting some snow maybe. I'm bringing it in. Oh. Get some water that way. Yep. See if baby will drink water. Okay. And then I'm getting in the car and I'm driving out. Okay, you can't drive out. Why? No key? No key. Hot wiring. Even if you could, car won't start because of dead Okay, then I'm walking out. In the blizzard? Yeah. With a baby? Yeah, definitely. Wrap them up. Eight miles is not that far. This is like the worst blizzard this area has ever seen. (sighs) Ah, Chris. Okay, then... Is it because you don't want to wait it out with the baby? (laughs) No, that'd be fine. I'm just worried that if I wait it out, it's going to get so deep that we can't get out. That's a good point. It all depends on how high up we are on the mountains. I absolutely, I can tell you, I did not check the weather all week because I checked the weather almost no, you didn't, every though. day. You didn't, though. 
No, I just missed today. No. But I would know. <laughs> I would know because I do. I always know. So I would know if it was going to be sunny like the next two days or something. But you looked on your weather app and you just happened it to lied? have you just happened to have the wrong location in because you were also curious oh. what the weather was like in the Keys. Okay. So you would grab the baby, strap it to you, and try to hike out of there. Well, maybe a full eight miles. Well, hold on. Are we on a hillside? Is there high ground I can get to? It's pretty flat, and like I said, you're not familiar with this area, so uh, you don't know. This is all highly unlikely. It could but happen. But I would be unfamiliar with the area and hike and not check the weather and pick the wrong location. I mean, you were off. This was just I an off day. Been. You're very hungry. The baby's malnourished and obviously very hungry. Mm -hmm. I think your first plan of action is figuring out what you do for food. And by the way, you don't have any food on you. Also unlikely. <laughs> I always carry a trail of snacks. Um, yeah, I mean, I wish I could get a better idea for what my kit was whether i had a compass that kind of thing well, you can ask any i'll tell you what you have <laughs> you don't know you don't know me <sighs> i i don't know um i it's hard because there's a, i mean i can trail run eight miles in not that long i mean and i used to trail run in but with in like 10 degrees in snow but with the weight of another baby oh, baby yeah. small baby small yeah Okay. And I mean, it would be a slow run, of course, but I mean, a couple hours and I'd be out. Okay. So that it all depends. It depends on like terrain, the type of trail, how well marked it was. So it's hard to answer that one because if it was truly like, I think you're getting at, like there's no way you could find the trail. There's no way you could go back down. Mm -hmm. Then you're building a fire. You're hunkering down. You're getting whatever food, you know, like pine needle tea, whatever. You're cutting the seats out of the car to insulate mm -hmm. some kind of baby bed. Um, you're getting wood. <laughs> For the fire, mm -hmm. you're potentially looking for food source in whatever you can scrape together, but hydrating the baby would be first priority. So tell me this. So are you leaning towards hunkering down in the cabin with the child and trying to make ends meet one way or another, or are you going to take advantage of the time you have right now before it gets too deep of snow and try to hike out of there with the baby? You have to choose one. Mm. My gut tells me, and based on how much time I've spent out in the woods, that I could get out. So that's probably what I try to do. Eight miles out. Especially if I had a compass, which usually I do. And a uh, whistle. Uh-huh. At the very least. Okay. Here's what I think. I think you set out. You get three miles. You're dead exhausted. You've completely lost your way. Baby has soiled himself again. Ugh, come and on, since baby. you have baby like under your clothing and stuff, your body temperature is dropping. So is the baby's. And because the baby wet himself is now frozen to you, mm. you get lost and you both freeze to death. You didn't tell me what happened with the other two. You lose. <laughs> no, I don't lose. <laughs> you lose on this you one. Just, no, you made that up because you didn't want me to do that. I'm the judge. I don't get a fork. No, I'm not saying that. You're still two out of three. Correct. I don't know about that. There's too many variables. <laughs> I say we leave it open. I lean towards the cabin. That's why I'm saying fail on this one. That's just my opinion. Um, I see totally where you're coming from on this, too. I think that could be the right thing to do. But how I imagine it is the end for both of you if you go that route. Maybe you all can uh, chime in. Let us know what you think, what you would yeah. do differently. Maybe you all can chime in and tell Chrissy's wrong. <laughs> that too. You can tell me I'm wrong. I'm okay with that. Guess what? You won a fork. Nice. Yay. Da -da 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 -da. Um, hey, Chris, Chris, pretend that you're like presenting it to me or something. Jeremiah. Yes, Chris. For surviving. <laughs> Thank you. In worst case scenarios. <laughs> Chris. Through desert and snow and hostage situations. <laughs> You, sir, are rewarded this beautiful silver stainless steel stainless? Walmart special fork no. I give to you, sir. <laughs> Thank you, Chris. Thank you. May you eat with the accuracy and stability of a sumo wrestler. I just wish these things were reusable. It's such a shame. No. 
It's so beautiful. It is reusable. Oh. It's stainless steel. Oh. Don't throw this I've away. I've been throwing them away. <laughs> I will smack you along the head if you okay. throw away this fork. That's why I ran out. Yeah. <laughs> I thought they, I just, I mean, okay. We got a lot to talk about. Yeah. So, yeah. Lots right. to learn. Off the, off, off, the, off the air. Yep. 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 All right. Good well, job, Jared. Thanks, Chris. Thanks for those great scenarios. Yeah. Those unnerving scenarios. Yeah. I was unnerved. All right. Chip party. Yeah, now we're going to eat some chips. All right, that's going to do it for this episode of The Banter. Hope you guys enjoyed that episode as much as we did recording it. I actually just talked to Jeremiah. It's been about mm, two weeks since we recorded that. And uh, he is happily using his fork um, very often. So (laughs) in case you were wondering if he went back to the chopsticks or not. So anyways, guys, thank you so much for listening. And as always, like, subscribe, follow wherever you get your podcasts. Uh, Please do that because it really helps us out. And if you want to follow us on Instagram at Unnerved Podcast, you're able to see photos related to each episode. And you'll be able to see a photo of Jer and I recording in the bus. And if you guys would like to leave us a voicemail with any questions or topics you would like us to discuss, please do so by visiting speakpipe.com forward slash unnerved podcast. And be sure to leave us a voicemail. We'd love to hear from you. You can find that link and more in the show notes. Hope you guys have a good rest of your week and we'll see you next time.